Welcome to the inside of Project M3, and uh, hello, and welcome to the benchmark. Um, my steering wheel is crooked, that's just because I parked like a bell end. Um, my voice sounds terrible. Um, I didn't get any sleep last night. Um, it's my mother's birthday today, and um, yeah, that's been weighing on me quite a lot. Um, but... I have things to do, one of which is to sort out this bloody windscreen. Now, let me show you something. Okay, so there's a crack on it, okay? Also, this car is supposed to have climate comfort windscreen. I checked on a VIN decoder. Let's get my phone out. Come on, there we go. You just had it. There we go. Right, right there is my VIN number, okay? And I punched it into this website, which has all the BMW codes. And it'll tell you the spec of your car. You know what, I'm gonna change the bloody, this is really starting to annoy me. Hang on a minute. Well, it's in 4K, I hope you can pick it out. But, one here, oh, I can zoom in, why don't I just do that? Climate Comfort Windscreen. See that there? Now that's an optional extra um, along with the rain sensors. Um, and what that windscreen does is, um, well, it blocks some extra UV rays. And UV rays are very bad. They burn you. Um, I don't know why more cars don't come with them as standard here. This is supposed to have the fancy screen. Now you might have seen them in other M3s. It's like a blue, purple, just like my sunglasses. Not quite as serious, but it has that effect. And that filters out all the nasty rays. Now, some twat, one of the previous 10 owners, has had this replaced. I guess it makes sense. But he got... <laughs> okay, I got that out. He got screwed over by auto glass. This happens all the time. It happened to my Audi as well. Okay, because I had a different glass for that. So when you have a crack in your windscreen and you say you need a replacement and you need to have the exact same one, they go, yes, of course, sir. We'll come along at X date or you come along to us at X date and we'll sort it out. And you, you go over and over and over it you know, make it clear, it's got to be this exact screen, it's a special screen, it's got a UV coating, if it doesn't have that UV coating, I will be throwing it at somebody, and they're heavy, you, you know, yada, 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 I exaggerate, but not too far off, depending on my mood, um, and I've asked these guys three or four times, and they keep telling me that it's green, and I'm like, no, it's not green, it's, it's blue, and they told me to come down early to have a look, but I've brought my, you know, proof and documents though I don't think I've got the original sales document in there but we can hope so let's see what happens hopefully they'll sort me out hopefully they have it in stock um, that would be great but I have a feeling that one or two things are going to happen one they're going to tell me to F off and I'm going to get a crappy you know third rate clear windscreen that will crack as soon as you f*** on it um, or it will be a order that's going to last six weeks, which is what happened to the Audi. Um, but I'd rather wait the six weeks. I mean, it's not going to, you know, kill me, I don't think. So anyway, let's see what happens. Okay, result. So yes, I'm getting my UV screen, which is the really cool blue tint. Um, it was a expensive option. Not many people took it out when they bought the car new. Um, climate something, I forget the bloody name, weird name. But anyway, so that is now there, gonna be blue. Um, and also gonna stop my Alcantara from getting bleached in the sun if it's outside, and burning me, and give me skin cancer. I'm not a fan of cancer. Also, I need to show you guys something. I've done something very, very silly. Um, as I said, I've had a very difficult uh, past day or so, and I did that on my brand new, freshly painted. It looks worse because it's, it's covered in mud, but yeah, I did that. However, the good news is the car was going back anyway um, because it wasn't uh, correct. A lot of the paint wasn't painted correctly. Um, there was some lacquer peel in places. Um, 
uh, the bumper wasn't aligned correctly. The uh, the splitter here on the left keeps drooping. Um, there were loads of little niggling issues, um, which Ralph was well aware of. So it was going back anyway. <laughs> but now there's an extra extra job to do. But um, oh yeah, and here's another mod that I've done. This is pretty cool. So I was finding the uh, the seats a little bit. Okay, I found the seats a little bit too tall, um, and that was because I had sliders in them, but I didn't want to lose the sliders because, well, I like to move the seats sometimes. However, let's see if I can show you. Okay, all right, so down here, you can see you have the side mount right here. Um, this is the sliding mechanism. You pull it up and you can go forwards and backwards. And this here, down here, is the sp specific mount for the E46 and this seat. Okay, you can see it there. Okay, so that bolts on to that, which bolts on to that, which bolts on to this. And you can adjust how high or low you want it. There's three holes here. It's on the second one. I can drop it down a bit more if I want, but then it will tilt down a little bit too much. I don't want that. So I've got it on the lowest here, and that's perfect. It's kind of like at an angle like this, and it, it lifts up your legs. Okay, so, right, does that make sense? Okay, so here's where the problem was. It was too high. Damn high. Now look on this side. Have you noticed something different? Well, we have, if you look here, oh, I need to put a cap on that. You've got the mount to the car. You've got the slider here, which is mounted to the floor mount. And you've got this plastic thing. And it's quite chunky as well. And that is double-sided, so there's a plastic bit up, bit up here and there's a plastic bit underneath and the bolt goes through and screws into the mount, okay? And it raises up about one and a bit millimetre, maybe a bit more, because it is quite thick when you add both bits together, okay? And all it is is decorative trim. I mean, really, it doesn't really add much. Um, by removing it, it's not uglier, but anyway, by doing that, it has made the car so much easier to get into and to get out of. I will now demonstrate. This is the cheapest mod I've ever done. Look, I'm gonna do it with no hands as well. How? This is easier than the uh, the GT3, and the seat position now is absolutely perfect. Perfecto. It is just right. It's exactly how I want it. So I'm delighted. I'm really, really comfortable. I was getting a slight lower back pain after about three, four hours driving before, um, but now that's gone. So. Yeah, that was awesome. Awesome little mod. And all it was, I don't know if you can see it down there, it was that little piece of plastic that went here. It's just a little cover. It covers this bit. That's all it was. That's all it was. So yeah. Cheapo mod. Lowered the seat. Very happy. Um, the trims. Yeah, my, my car looks terrible at the moment. But I don't care, it's my car. You can't really see the inside. I didn't close the door properly, did I? It's very well soundproof, this car. Really is. Um, anyway, yeah, so all the trims are gone. I've got new trims, and I am going to show you them now. Don't they look good? Maybe you don't like the look of them. Maybe you're wondering what's going on. Why does it look strange? Don't worry. There's a reason behind why I've done what I've done. 
it's going to be the same Alcantara as this steering wheel here, charcoal. It's going to have the same motorsport stitching. However, focus, it's going to be straight, not cross stitched. It's going to be straight. And I'm going to have it kind of go across the dash in one swooping line. And down here, it's just going to be up to put my little booty on just temporarily. Um, but yeah, it's ugly, isn't it? But at least all this stuff works. So that will go in soon. The doors, the doors are ugly. They really do let the car down. Um, again, I have plans for them. Now, if I remember rightly, the top parts, this part here is separate and these bits come off. So I am thinking of removing that. I've also got some uprated speakers as well. I don't listen to music in this car because it sounds so bloody good, but I've got some uprated speakers. Um, so I'm going to upgrade at the same time, but I'm going to rip these out and I'm going to have them done in Alcantara. Again, charcoal with BMW Motorsport stitching. No green guys. Green's going to be overkill. I'm, there are, there's going to be green bits, but I'm not... Uh, originally I was going to do like green everywhere and then it was going to be like Kermit the Frogs M3. It was just too much. But I'm going to have it all kind of Alcantara. The handle, I'm not sure... If you have any ideas, guys, please let me know. I'm not the most artistic of people. Uh, I often get inspired by uh, women, really, because they're better at this kind of... That sounds so sexist, but it's true. I'm, I'm not very good at design. Um, you got to re remember that I'm going to have a roll cage in the back, um, and that's going to be gone as well. The back seats are going to be Alcantara with some stitching um, and with a surprise on the backrest. Um, so you're going to have a, a green roll cage, which hopefully matches with this here. Um, also going to reinforce the subframe, um, just in case. Just in, uh, I've already got plates welded on it, but just in case, I'm doing it anyway. Um, and that should be the interior done. Stereo works okay, I've got Bluetooth audio. Sat nav, uh, I'm a man. I'll just guess where I'm going. <laughs> um... Oh, this as well. Gonna take this out, Alcantara. Um, again, matching, same as the rest, charcoal. Um, I might use a harder wearing one. I might use a faux suede, because this gets touched a lot, and the heavy duty fake stuff is stronger. So I might do that, and it's cheaper. Um, I'm okay with all this, this is all fine. Look, it's not a, a glam car. I'm just making it nice, that's all. It's my car, I've got to live in it, and I just want to make it nice, that's all. Um, and then it's just my little things, the rear diff's going in, the 4.1 gears, um, da, 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 da. what else? I've got some carbon fiber goodies going in the engine bay. I've got a CSL air box, that is literally on its way to me right now as I speak to you. Maybe it'll arrive tomorrow, might arrive now when I'm out, typical. Um, and that's going in, then it's going to have an ECU swapped. Is it an ECU swap or are they going to modify my ECU? I don't know which, I need... I can't remember, I've got too much going on, but we're going to do something with the ECU regardless, so it supports the air box. Um, that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, carbon fiber goodies, CSL airbox, and a ECU that's been modified to work with it. It's not just going to be that crappy, what do they call it, where they just bolt it on and the car just kind of guesses. Um, it's like a default mode. Um, I'm not doing that. It's going to be a proper remap, mapped specifically for the airbox. Um, I've got uh, brand new OEM spark plugs, I've got all the oil filters gearbox or I've done the gearbox all already actually I've got diff oil um, obviously just you know about diff getting done blah, blah, blah. repeating myself uh, uh, drum brakes gonna get those sorted out because they're not very good um, and then just a gen general run over things do a full vanos check last time it was perfect we'll do it again and hopefully all of that including the bodywork will be done in time for the beginning of summer so I can go to Nürburgring and enjoy the car, I hope. So that's where we're at. Okay, thanks guys. Take care. Bye-bye.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>